neck of an hourglass into a heaped pile. The last grain slows in the air, then bursts into cosmic light. The light pulses and myriad galaxy clusters resolve in an abyss. One galaxy spirals radiantly in the dark. Having liberated the hourglass and become keeper of time, my next task was to restart history. Not beholden to past events, I was free to craft a new era. It was with humility and restraint that I approached this blank canvas. After careful preparation, I began work, painting over the darkness. After eons passed, I sketched out the realms. After eons more, I brushed them in with life. A star flares over a planet. In my new era, all beings will have the opportunity to find peace. Whether or not they do, will be their responsibility. For my power only permits me to begin this endeavor. It is the duty of mortals to finish it. The title appears over a vista of mountains and red-leafed trees surrounding a shimmering lake. Mortal Kombat 1. Mortal Kombat 1. End user license agreed. Story. Fight yo. Customize story settings. These can be changed. Story test yo. Medium. Left and right. Change. Words appear. WB Games presents a NetherRealm Studios production. An old man stands in front of a caravan near a crowd. My friends, your patience is about to be rewarded. For I have saved the best for last. I have recently discovered a cure-all of unrivaled potency. It will soon be on the shelves in every home of Outworld. This elixir is crafted from an ancient recipe. It has Patreon flowers, Margovian nectar, powdered teeth of an Arctican dragon. All this and more infused with powerful Lycorian magic. There is a village in the next canton over, where everyone has purchased this miracle cure. Overnight, all diseases, even Tarkat, have disappeared. Now magic this potent is expensive. And I am sure you're asking yourselves, can I afford it? But the true question you must ask is... Can I afford to be without it? You lie, Shang Tsung. Your cures are useless! The crowd parts for a bald man as he strides to Shang Tsung, fists hanging at his sides. I'm sorry. You are... Someone fool enough to have believed you! My daughter was dying when you came to my farm. You promised a miracle, and I gave you all I had. But only days later... She was dead. <laughs> that is impossible. My magic could not have failed her. There was no magic! I took your elixir to an Imperial mage, and you know what she said? The bald man snatches a potion from him and throws it down. It's nothing! Just Bojang tea! The mage is mistaken, kind sir. My elixirs are of superior quality. Their efficacy is guaranteed. The bald man flings him to the ground. Shang Tsung raises his hands as the crowd closes in around him. Lightning flashes over Shang Tsung's caravan at night. Lamp light pours out from it. Shang Tsung emerges from a door in his caravan, a small case in one hand. He slowly takes a seat on the small wooden stairway leading from his caravan door. He opens the case, revealing a mirror inside. He squeezes his eyes shut, then reaches for his head. His long grey beard drops to the muddy ground. 
Shang Tsung regards his reflection, now younger, beardless, and with shorter hair. It is an excellent ruse, your disguise. A woman stands nearby. Backwater folk are far more likely to trust a kindly old man. You're on behalf of a dissatisfied customer. If it's revenge you want, have at it. If it's restitution, there's nothing left. What I want, Shang Tsung, is to elevate you, to make you the great sorcerer that now you can only pretend to be. A generous offer. Why me? You are uniquely resilient. Who else could eke out a living traveling Outworld's hinterlands, selling quack cures and fake magic? <laughs> a living? It is barely survival. And you were meant for more. To live among kings, not peasants. But since before you were born, you have been conspired against by those who fear how formidable you could become. How do you know this? Who are you? I am your deliverer, Shang Tsung. Join me, and I will put the realms at your feet. Water streams down Shang Tsung's face as he meets the woman's glowing blue eyes. He smiles toothily. A title appears, Mortal Kombat 1. Three men wearing sun hats plow a farm by various cottages. Power line towers hang crookedly near them. An ornate building sits on a mountain peak looming behind. Oh, this is a good harvest, Kung Lao. Yes. <clears throat> it is a blessing, Raiden. You would rather we starve? No, no, of course not. But we've worked these fields since we were kids. In 40 years, we'll still be here. Stooped and feeble like old man Wei. An old man glares at them and spits. Kung Lao waves. As long as I've known you, you've dreamed of leaving Fengjian. Why can't you be happy here? Our ancestors fought in great wars. They died with honor and glory. Stories of our great adventures <laughs> will be passed down for generations. It may not be glorious, but what we do helps the village thrive. I know. But is it so wrong to want some excitement? If that's what you want, may I suggest a bet? Dinner at Madame Beau's tonight. Last to fill their cart pays. You work faster than me? Ha! <laughs> Since when? You're on, Raiden. Kung Lao and Raiden both smirk while they shake hands. The two men pass the day harvesting cabbages from their field and throwing them into separate carts. Kung Lao wipes sweat from his brow, then quickly pushes his cart with Raiden down a dirt road to the cottages. A woman uses a kettle to pour tea into a pair of small porcelain cups on a table in a crowded restaurant. She carries a platter with the cups and kettle away as Kung Lao and Raiden walk in. That is amazing. I am starving. I wonder what Madame Bo is making tonight. An old woman approaches. For you two, whatever you want. Thank you, Madame Bo. You spoil us. Like the sons I never had. Madame Bo leads them to an outdoor dining area. They sit at one of the many tables. Have you two been practicing my lessons? As we can. The harvest leaves us little time for martial arts. Since your first words, Kung Lao, you've mouthed nothing but excuses. If you fail to prepare... Your preparations will fail you. Good. You haven't forgotten. But we'll see if I make you anything special tonight. I'm glad you're paying. Madame Bo might just pad the bill with her anger. I am paying? You finished work last. But I delivered my cart first. Delivered? Huh. The bet was filled. That's not what I remember. So that's how it is, eh? What do you say we settle this man to man? Hmm? They walk off. <laughs> Wait, you mean fight? Yes. Right here, right now. Madame Bo can watch. 
critique our form. A hooded man with glowing white eyes watches them pass by. Best two out of three? Fair enough. We must be careful. Madame Beau will kick us out if we break something. <laughs> oh, this won't last long enough for that to happen. You will be down in no time. Fight. bows to the watching crowd while Raiden kneels. Kung Lao helps him up. You haven't beaten me yet. The day's coming, Kung Lao. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. A variety of plates and bowls with scraps of food in them sit on Kung Lao and Raiden's table. You were hungry. <clears throat> oh, everything was delicious, Madame Bo. Thank you, Raiden. You boys are always a pleasure to cook for. Raiden hands her cash, but his face drops as she beckons for more. A breeze wafts a bill from his hand toward a man in a dark garb and gas mask. He closes his fist around the bill, then looks toward Kung Lao and Raiden. Madam Bo, the Lin Kuei await your answer. Five people in dark clothes and cloth masks stand with him. He advances on Madam Bo. I have been busy, Smoke. She steps away. The Lin Kuei? Who are they? Don't know, but I don't like where this is going. What do we do? Stay ready. Madam Bo, it is a simple choice. Pay for our protection, or risk harm to this fine establishment. You'll get nothing from me. That, Madam Bo, is unfortunate. He turns to the Lin Kuei warriors and nods. They flip tables and chairs. Madame Bo punches Smoke's face. He blocks her next flurry of jabs, then flips her through a railing. She falls onto a table below, breaking. Madame Bo! Kung Lao and Raiden quickly get up from their table and fight their way through the Lin Kuei warriors. 
Smoke throws a smoke bomb, then jumps through the spreading cloud and kicks Kong Lao and Raiden to the floor. Oh. You two are brave, but against us, you are in over your head. We don't care who you are or who you are with. You will not menace Mad Bro. Fight. Raiden punches a Lin Kuei, who stumbles back. Kung Lao grabs him, then drops him. This was you? Honestly, I'm surprised too. Come on, let's help Madame Bo. A figure in blue, Sub-Zero, watches from a rooftop. He throws a bolt of ice at their feet. A man in yellow, Scorpion, paces over while spinning a kunai-tipped rope dart. His upper arms are bare, showing a scorpion tattoo. Three, four, you stand. Sub-Zero shoots another ice bolt. It strikes the railing behind them. How does he do that? I have no idea. You interfere with Lin Kuei business. Leave, or face our wrath. Abandon Madame Bo. Not happening. Sub-Zero leaps onto Raiden and tackles him down a stairway. And the rope dart wraps around Kung Lao's leg. Scorpion pulls at him with it. Get over here! He yanks Kung Lao to the floor and drags him closer. Kung Lao rolls to his feet and jumps and spin kicks Scorpion's head. Want more? I have plenty. You should have fled when you could. Prepare to regret ever crossing the Lin Kuei. Fight! <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Sub-Zero skewers the victim's skull with ice daggers. He headbutts them. Scorpion slings rope darts through his victim's sternum and neck. He pulls. Scorpion slams them. Second guessing your choice to confront me? Crossing me. Kung Lao watches Sub Zero kick Raiden into a pillar from the balcony. Raiden looks up, then climbs the pillar to the level above. Sub Zero eyes him, then kicks two legs out from under a table, turning it into a ramp. He uses it to vault through the air and kick Raiden on the upper level. Raiden staggers into a bar counter where a man drinks. Raiden grabs a cleaver from a pig's head sitting on the bar and slings it at Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero weaves around the blade and Raiden slices off the cap of the man's liquor bottle. He pours it into a cup. Sub-Zero blasts ice at Raiden, freezing his hands to the bar. The man plucks a bit of the ice and drops it into his drink. Kung Lao throws his hat at Sub-Zero's head. It bounces off harmlessly. Smirking, Kung Lao shrugs. Incompetent. Kung Lao chucks a circular chakram decoration. It nicks Sub-Zero and plunges into a wall. Oh, that works. I have had enough of you. Then go, before I put you down like the rest of your Lin Kuei. You haven't a prayer against the Lin Kuei's Grand Master. Fight! You're a grandmaster. Kung Lao picks up his hat, then eyes the chakram decoration stuck in the wall. He strokes the hat's brim. Interesting. Kung Lao, over here! Raiden checks Madame Bo's pulse as she lies inert, eyes shut. Kung Lao hurries over to them. Madame Bo? She's out cold. Oh no, is she... Dead? Not yet. She gets to her feet, lips a cigarette, then ignites it with a lighter. Madame Bo, how are you? Kung Lao. The hooded man with the glowing white eyes approaches them. Madame Bo takes a drag from her cigarette while the man meets her eye. So, Madame Bo, are they ready? A bit thick in the head, perhaps, but they are ready. His eyes are glowing. I am Lord Liu Kang. God of fire, and protector of Earthrealm. God? Earthrealm? Madame Bo has been preparing you for this moment since you were boys. Today, you have proven worthy of joining my champions. This fight was... a test? Of your ability and character, yes. Liu Kang looks to the upper level. Li Han, Kuai Liang. 
Smoke, Scorpion, Sub-Zero and the other numerous Lin Kuei warriors get to their feet. Kung Lao crosses his arms and crinkles his nose as Sub-Zero and Scorpion step to him and Raiden. The others stand along the balcony. Sub-Zero and Scorpion stand on either side of Liu Kang. So these two aren't thugs? The Lin Kuei is a centuries-old clan dedicated to Earthrealm's defense. You keep saying Earthrealm. Don't you mean Earth? You boys have so much to learn. Earth is only a part of Earthrealm. Earthrealm itself is one of many realms. Together, they comprise the whole of the universe. The realms can be fierce, bitter rivals. That's why we need champions to defend ours. The time draws near for the Grand Martial Arts Tournament between Earthrealm and the Realm of Outworld. Held once each century, it allows each realm to demonstrate its strength. While our realms are at peace, there are Outworlders who would prefer us to be at war. Our victory in the tournament will temper their zeal. I've taught you everything I can. You must finish your training with Lord Liu Kang. More training? These two couldn't defeat us. <laughs> <laughs> what? They were pulling their punches. Had we not held back, you would not have survived. Come. The monks at the Wuxi Academy await to continue your tutelage. I am ready, Lord Liu Kang. And you, Raiden? Leave Feng Jian? I'm needed here. Earth Realm needs you, Raiden. You'll best serve the village by being one of its champions. I understand. Excellent. I will join you soon. First, there are other champions I must gather. Sunlight soaks through a jungle canopy. A man in a leather jacket and wide brim hat hacks through the foliage with a machete. Another younger man with a backpack and rifle trails behind him. The men pause. We're off the map. We should go back, recheck the route. It's this way. The man with the hat slices through the jungle as he strides forward. The pair slow to a stop and look out at a massive human skull carved into the front of a stone edifice, a large doorway at its mouth. The temple. The pair move along a ruined stone pathway leading to the temple entrance. They stop near a seated woman. Flies buzz around her. The man with the hat shines a flashlight in the woman's face, revealing her to be a corpse with various darts sticking from her. Rot partially covers her face and her glassy eyes gaze blankly out. A swarm of beetles scurry out of her mouth. God damn it, Alessia. He cringes as the younger man's face draws tight. They examine numerous holes on the temple doorway. The darts came from here. The man leaves through a journal filled with notes and drawings of venomous animals. Can you open it? Without killing us? <laughs> Let's hope so. The temple doors open. Light streams past the two men and into the dusty entryway of the temple. Both turn on their flashlights and step inside. They walk through a broad hall. Thick pillars with human figures carved into them line its walls. They turn a corner. Sunlight floods through ruined parts of the wall to their left, and small weeds rise from cracks in the stone floor. Turn them off. They turn off their flashlights. And we're definitely getting warmer. The pair moves down an aisle hedged in by low walls. Lines of fire flicker along the top of each wall. How are these still burning? Oil bubbles up from the ground. The chamber channels it somehow. They move to a doorway blanketed with ivy at the end of the aisle and pause. The two men hop down a short ledge and continue forward. The man with the hat leads the younger man down a path winding through various tall rock formations. They enter a vast chamber. Metal hooks hang from the ceiling over flames flickering in a central circular dais where the rotting body of a man sits on a throne made of intricately carved stone. He holds an ornate metal shield in one hand and a mace in the other. Karavala and his shield. What? 
Silver liquid shimmers around large stones in the floor beyond. So? There's metal in the floor. That's not just any metal. It's liquid mercury. Shit, that stuff's toxic. Fatal. Only step where I step. The man with the hat carefully picks his way across the path of stones, the younger man close behind. The younger man steps onto a different stone and starts to fall. The man with the hat grabs his shoulder. Huh? What did I say? The man with the hat steps back on another stone. It sinks a little. The two men sprint across the stones as liquid mercury floods out of channels and ruined pillars surrounding the dais. The man with the hat reaches the other side. The younger man stumbles, then leaps to solid ground. I'm sorry. I... Not now. He examines the reflection of a pillar in the liquid mercury surrounding the dais. He eyes the pillar itself. Get out the explosives. That's our bridge. Do this right, it'll fall across. The younger man sets explosives at the base of the pillar. shoots up from the liquid mercury. Two armored women with tattered bat wings rise up. The Kalima? They're real? The Kalima fly toward them. Keep working. I'll take care of the she-beasts. You disturb Cantaravala's slumber. For your sin, you die. Fight! No time to die, crazy lady. The man with the hat rushes over. You okay? Yes, we ready? The younger man nods and detonates a bomb that blows up a pillar. The pillar falls and they fist bump. Physics for the win. Let's go. They walk across the fallen pillar above the pool of mercury and explore deeper into the overgrown tomb. They stop by the corpse of Kataravala. The man with the hat brushes his hand across its shield. The younger man exclaims, This'll be worth millions. It belongs in a museum. He grabs the shield. The younger man leans in, and Kataravala's face turns. He staggers back and falls into the mercury. He struggles, but the liquid overtakes him. Adam! Kataravala swings a spiked mace. The man dodges and jumps onto the pillar. It strikes the shield and throws him onto the ground. He quickly sits up as it pounces. It chucks away its broken mace. It stalks over. You will not have it. He rises. You don't need it. You're dead. Speaking of which, you just killed my best friend. And I'm not one to forgive and forget. Fart. Black. 
Now where's that shield? He sprints past Kataravala. I am not yet defeated! Yes, you are. He spins, chucks the shield, and cuts its head off clean. The shield slams against the wall and bounces back into his hand. Time to go home. Cut! Freddy! I knew it! Who? I felt that one. You felt it too, right? Crew member. Temple of Kataravala, take 39, tails up. Director. That's a wrap. In a studio, crew cheer. The director takes off a headset and hands it to a woman. The hatted man shakes his hand. Steven, this was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> oh, just like the old days. And these props. Jimbo killed it. <laughs> Steven takes the shield. You did too, Johnny. Hey, uh, about my pitch. You know, the karate zombie thing? I'm thinking four films. Maybe a streaming series? Johnny, I don't have- You're right. Not here. I'll swing by your office after I change. Mm, I can't. Uh, have to be with the editors. Walking away. Marsha will call you. Johnny pumps a fist in the air. Great! Have your assistant call me. A blonde woman. That was great, Han. Wasn't it, though? We need to celebrate. I'm thinking private party. But Johnny, we need to talk. She walks off, and Johnny hangs his head, later in a luxury mansion in the hills. You're not the martial arts megastar you once were, honey. You're lucky Steven owed you a favor. I'm telling you, Chris, we're fine. Can you join me in the fact-based universe just once? We're broke. We have to cut back. Cut back? On what? Step one is selling this place. Mm. I need a refill. Resume. Oh. Johnny, we can't keep this up. You spent 10,000 on that sculpture, 30,000 on that drone, and this damn sword. Three million dollars? Hey, Cento is history. That sword comes from... Ugh, that's not the point, Johnny! Chris, honey, the parts, the money, they're coming. Steven's movie is just the beginning. That's why I can't cut back. To be a success, I have to project it. If I don't, Johnny Cage is done. She frowns. Johnny rests his hands on her shoulders. She pushes one hand aside. I didn't marry Johnny Cage! I married John Carlton. I'd give anything to have him back. She leaves. Chris, come on, Chris, where are you going? Johnny puts his hands on his head. Fuck! He grabs his drink and downs it, then walks back to pour himself another. How do you like that, Mr. Haylist? A black-haired man strides in. Thank God. Oh, Chris, honey, I... Johnny turns and sees the stranger, who wears a sleek black suit and brandishes a long sword. Where's my wife? What did you... Your wife left. She's fine. You will be too, if you cooperate. What do you want? Sento. It hangs above a fireplace. You some kind of hired gun? Or do you know Sento's history? I know it. It's my family, Blade. They circle each other. No. No way you're Tyra clan. They've been dead for centuries. Not dead. Hiding. With Sento in my hands, I'll lead us out of the shadows. That's a great plan, stranger. Except for one thing. Sento's mine. And I won't give it up without a fight. Fight.
ultimate home security system. My rules. Later at night, the defeated swordsman is tied to a chair. He rouses from unconsciousness, and Johnny sits across from him. <sighs> so, you have a name or what? Kenji Takahashi. <laughs> I knew you weren't Tyra Clan. You know nothing, Cage. 400 years ago, the Tyra Clan were one of Japan's first families. They lost Sento after getting slaughtered at the Siege of Aomori. There were survivors. They hid themselves by shedding the name Taira for Takahashi. They joined the Bakuto for its protection. The Yakuza's predecessors. From first family to crime family. I will break us free of the Yakuza's corruption. Reclaim our name and our position. But my clan won't follow me unless I prove that I can lead. That's why I need Sento. And that's Malibu's fine. He walks toward the door. It's a great story. Bullshit. <laughs> but great. You should seriously consider becoming a screenwriter. Liu Kang, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero wait outside. What in the actual fuck? Good evening, Johnny Cage. I am Liu Kang, protector of Earthrealm. May we enter? Uh, nothing's being shot here tonight. Uh... You sure you're in the right place? Yes. We come on a matter of grave importance. We must speak to you and your guest. What? Johnny narrows his eyes. How do you know about him? Because I am the god of fire. Chris, you vixen. Nicely done. Sure. I, I come right in. Glowing eyes are a nice touch. They approach Kenshi, who remains tied up beside an indoor pool. Kenshi Takahashi, a tragic figure with a noble cause. Your actions this evening do you no credit. Who are these people? You tell me. They're your scene partners. I also know of your struggles, Johnny Cage. I am here to offer you both a path forward. Dun, dun. <laughs> oh, come on, guys, let's call this. Chris was a doll to set this up, but as pranks go, this one's a bit obvious. This is no prank. Bihan, Kui Liang, if you please. The blue-robed Sub-Zero starts to untie Kenshi. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll play my part in this uh, martial arts LARP. The missus ought to get what you paid for. Ah, <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh. Hey, you. Uh, wait, wait. Hey, you. Get your damn hands off him. I said, get your hands off. Johnny grabs him, but Sub Zero kicks him across the room. Johnny slides into a table with a ten thousand dollar sculpture on top, teeters and falls. Scorpion. Was that necessary, brother? To put him in his place. That was a hitchuli. One of a kind! He stands. All right, I don't care if this is a damn prank. You cross the line.
the attacker hits the victim's face with a hook, then twists their arm to break their shoulder. Sub-Zero slides on ice shards which stab up through his victim's abdomen and skull. He then chops down with an ice war hammer. Now will you take this seriously? I hope you're insured, because you're paying for my hachumi. Imbecile! You have no idea with whom you're dealing! Liu Kang bursts into no. flames. The flames dissipate. Ah... Uh, that's no special effect. Indeed, Johnny Cage. Johnny shifts his footing and glares. Kuai Liang. Scorpion bows. Okay, let's go back to one here. Who are you again? Lord Liu Kang, protector of Earthrealm, god of fire. Well, that last one tracks, but what's an Earthrealm? All will be explained, Johnny Cage. For now, what is important is that you both have been chosen to join its champions. Why him? Or me, for that matter. Because I have faith that you will rise to the challenge and because your service will change the arcs of your lives. Johnny eyes Kenshi. Later, men spar in a sunlit courtyard. Mountains surround them, and lion statues border the entrance to the courtyard. Red pagodas are sitting...